Hello, and welcome to Asset Control System, which hereafter will be called Lowry ACS. Lowry ACS is truly a unique tracking solution that brings together multiple aspects of asset control to provide critical insight of your company's physical assets. In today's video, we're going to cover the three stages of an asset's life cycle using ACS. The first being the creation of an asset, the second being tracking and managing an asset, and the third being the disposable of an asset. This is the welcome page of Lowry ACS. I'm going to log in here. And as I log in, this will bring us to the home page of ACS. A quick overview. Over here on the left hand side, we have the logo of ACS. Here on the top center is the username, the location that we've logged in as, and the user type. On the right hand corner, we have the button for the home page, the online help which any question that you'll have as a user will be answered here for you, and the logout. Under applications are all the available applications that are available for the user. The user's information, uh, a section here where you can change your password and change your PIN. And then under the account, um, depending on the user's uh, credentials in ACS, they could have different locations that they can log into and also different user types, which we'll talk about further. Also, the user notifications, the assigned work orders, and the save searches will cover more later on in detail as the video goes on. So the first part that we're going to talk about today is the creation of an asset in it, inside of ACS. In order to do that, you'll click on enter an item. Under here, you'll actually be able to select a department of a the, uh, where the asset is being created and then you can select the asset type. In this example we're going to use the IT department and then we're also going to use desktop uh, using a desktop computer. And what you'll do here is you'll be able to enter in the serial number, a model number here in this example, and the make. And then from here, you can also pack it into a container. Uh, in this example, we're actually going to put it in the main conference room of our Brighton office. And then what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to submit it. Now, before I do that, one thing I do want to say about that's a great feature about ACS is any of these fields right here are actually customizable depending on your needs. So any of the departments you can call and you can create and make your own, uh, any of the desktop, any of this. Uh, stuff you can actually change and you can also customize the fields that need to be added here. Uh, talk to your sales rep and he'll kind of further explain to you exactly how this works. Uh, now we submit the app, uh, submit the, the asset uh, and this is, gives you a screen to confirm the entry and then here's a successfully added your new item letting you know that there's a success that your item has been added. Uh, another way that you can actually add items is also in batch entry which will let you, let's say, for instance, you have 100 computers that come into the IT department that you need to add. They're all the same make, they're all the same model. You'd be able to come in and type in uh, the, the model number that they are. So let's just say they're all uh, S500s and they're uh, a Sony laptop or a Sony desktop. And let's just say there's 100 of them, like I said. And what you'd be able to do is you'd add that and then you'd hit submit. And then from there you'd be able to, uh, those hundred items would be added inside of ACS. And then the last way that you're actually able to enter information is actually through importing the information. An example of the sheet being filled out properly is here shown here for you. It's a uh, CSV file. And all you simply need to do is upload the file and then click add to existing assets or you could click on replacing existing assets or update the existing assets whichever way that you'd like to add them. So the next area of ACS that we're coming to is the search function. 
uh, here we'll be able to search actually the asset that we created originally, which was the XBR1234. And we'll be able to search for the, uh, the asset. Here is displayed where it, what the asset is, uh, what department it is, what type. Um, you can see the status that it was moved to the location, what location that it's in, and if it's located in a container. What's also great about this is you can come in and view and edit the information. So let's say the model number, you know, we call that MO789, but we realize, you know what, that's not actually the right number. It's uh, SSN778. Uh, and so we say, okay, that's just wrong. Like we need to update it. So you'd be able to come in and update the information and you can return back to it. What's also great is you can take a look at the details of what exactly has happened with this as, uh, asset since it's been created. So it gives you a, a transaction log of exactly what's gone on. You can also, uh, if there's any packed items that are in the asset itself and any labels that are attached to it. For instance, there's a serial label, which is the XBR1234 label. And we can actually print that label that you can put on to the uh, asset itself. And then another great feature is the ability to actually attach a file to this uh, to the asset. And a great application for this would be uh, giving you the access to photos or documents or warranty information, manuals, or even a purchase order that's applied to this particular asset. The next section that we're going to come into for ACS is actually the ability to the browse function. Uh, and what we'll be able to do is actually take uh, a look at the Brighton location and we'll pull up the room that the our XBR1234 asset is in which was in the uh, main conference room so if we scroll down you'll see that our assets right here and what's great is you can actually take an overview of all the different assets that are inside of this inside of this conference room if you wanted to see it in a different kind of the traditional way uh, you'd be able to right click on the conference room itself click on view and process selected assets and it'll pull up the room itself. And then over here where it says the assets that are inside of it, just click on uh, click on the uh, magnifying with the mag magnifying glass. And this gives you a list of all the assets that are inside of that room and the different statuses and what containers that they're in. Now we're going to go ahead and talk about the second stage of, the, of an asset life cycle using Lowry's ACS system. Uh, that second stage would be tracking and managing an asset. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to cover the main aspects that, of what ACS has been been used as or being being used, um, and that's going to be uh, to have an uh, an asset uh, be assigned to a user uh, using our Find It application, uh, setting a asset as being missing, how to move an asset, how to receive an asset. Um, how to request a transfer and then in turn transfer an asset to a different location. Um, how to schedule an audit and then from there performing an audit. How to unassign an asset. And then also at the same time setting up notifications and going through and, and um, uh, showing, uh, setting up custom notifications to notify you as a user when a certain procedure or a certain process has been has been created and followed through on. Um, as you notice here on our home screen uh, when I talked about earlier, what's nice is we have a we've saved a search for our custom uh, asset that we created here in the first half. Uh, so all you have to do is instead of going under search, all we gotta do now is just click here and it pulls up the asset for us. So the first step that we're going to do here, uh, the first procedure is we're going to actually assign uh, the asset. Now what we'll do is we'll go here, select the user that we'll assign it to. We'll assign it to Malika and click on assign. And now the asset has been assigned inside of ACS. Let's decide, maybe you decide at this point that what we'd like to do is we'd like to do the find an asset application and create a work order. Now with the find and find it application, this is something that will be held. What's nice is, is uh, you're able to take the uh, interface with the, the mobile and with a handheld, you'd be able to go and actually find the asset uh, and look for it. So you'd click on find asset, click on um, the asset. And what's nice also here is uh, what's great about ACS is right now we don't have any custom fields set up. 
uh, over here, but under actually find asset forms, we can actually put in, you can, as a user, and depending on your business needs, of course, you can put in all of the different uh, key ways that you'd like to track the asset. So let's say here you'd like to put in the date, uh, the user that's creating the that's creating the putting the form or whatever it may be. Uh, you can put everything, all that information here, and then click on Find Asset. And you'll notice here under our work orders, there's a Find It Asset. Uh, now that's uh, under that work order. Uh, let's say that now the next application from Find It. As you say, okay, well, you know what? Um, let's say the asset is missing, for instance. So we, we want to mark the asset as being missing. So you just simply click on missing. Um, again, you can create custom fields down here. Let's say who you might put down, like, who's the user that's creating the uh, missing, uh, when was the date, and maybe what's the expected location. Uh, and then click on missing here. And it changes the status of the asset to missing. Um, and then what's great is, is let's say, all right, you know what, like, let's move the asset. So right now the asset is currently uh, inside of the Brighton uh, headquarters. And let's decide that, let's say we'd like to move the asset from the Brighton headquarters to, let's say, the Brighton main conference room. So we decide to move it into that, into that location. We'd click on move. And now you'll notice that the application, um, uh, that the asset is now moved to the Brighton location. Um, now let's, now if you notice here, our screen just lit up where it says receive. And so what we can do is if we pull up an asset and now that we're in Brighton, the, the headquarters, uh, what's nice is we can actually receive the asset here. And when we click on that, uh, it'll receive the application, uh, I'm sorry, receive the asset at our location. And now you'll notice that now it's been received before and now where the container was that it was before and now that it's in it's in the HQ uh, now that it's placed in the HQ and so let's say we decide to request a transfer should be our next procedure that will follow and what this will do is this will also create a custom work order here so we'll hit request transfer and now the you'll notice that the status has changed to transfer requested and by the which user now, in order to complete this transfer, what we'll have to first do is we want to complete the work order, which is what department we'd like to move it from. So it's going to be uh, moving from the sales department, which is what it's in currently. And again, you can put in your custom fields here. You're going to approve the transfer. And then the next step after you've approved the transfer is to, tra to complete the transfer itself. So you'll click on the item again. So it's going to go to which department? Like, let's say now from sales, you decided to move this desktop to our IT department and the date that's needed. So let's say that you've decided that you want to do it on March 13th, 2012, and you decide to transfer the application. Uh, I'm sorry, you decide to transfer the, the asset. And what you'll notice is if when we come back, uh, we'll go to the home page, click on the asset. You'll notice that now the asset has been transferred and that the department now has changed. If you remember before, it said sales here, and now that the department has been the asset has been transferred uh, to the IT department. And another great way of checking this out is, is understanding, clicking on details, and you can actually see all the details that we've just done with the asset from where we requested the transfer, the the where the transfer was uh, transfer was actually approved and who it was approved by and what time and what location and then where it was transferred to. And so it'll tell you from the sales department, it was transferred to the IT department on which date was it needed, 3-13, uh, 2012. Now we've had the asset in it and we've had it assigned some Malika. And let's decide, let's say that we decide that we want to unassign the, the asset to Malika. We would simply click on the asset and unassign the asset uh, from that particular user, just click on unassign, and now the application or the asset is unassigned. It goes back uh, to who it was unassigned by, which would be me as the user. Now the next uh, application that I'd like to show uh, that ACS can do is actually an audit. And a great way of doing an audit is let's say we're taking this room in particular inside of the headquarters, which is the staging room and we'd like to 
go in and let's open it up and we want to schedule a, an audit of not only just the room itself but also the 11 items that are within it. So what you'd simply do is you'd click on schedule audit and again here you can customize different forms. We'd hit schedule audit and what this will do is it'll create a custom work order to to actually um, to schedule the audit itself for that particular room. So you can see all the different assets here uh, that are part of the staging room and um, how you know how do we take them out or what needs to be done. Uh, everything here has been has been written. So all you would need to do simply from here now. Uh, you know, for instance, our asset that we would put into there, which is the XBR123, we'd simply just, in order to complete it, click on the asset, click on complete work order, um, and then click on audit, and that would take care of the asset. And then let's say we found another one. Um, we found uh, this RFID uh, 0001. We'd do the same thing. We'd complete and then you do a, do the audit from here. Uh, but most of the, the application, the way that it's actually used with the audit is you'd schedule the audit here, and then inside of the mobile, you would go in into the location, and you'd actually could scan the barcode, or if you like, you can actually customize and scan it with RFIDs. And then what would happen is the information from the mobile will be, from the handheld, would be imported into ACS, and it would clear this form for you. So this will conclude our second, the second part of the uh, the asset staging. The uh, last part of uh, that we're going to talk about today uh, is going to be the third part of ACS, uh, which is going uh, the the third uh, stage of the asset life cycle, which is going to be the disposing of an asset. And so here we have again our favorite asset, the XBR one two three four. Uh, this desktop and let's say we decide to delete an asset um, you know just we don't want to see it anymore for some particular reason and so what you would what you would do is you would come down and the way that we have it set up currently in this application or the way that this setup is, is set up is that uh, the user has to be set up uh, I'm sorry in the same location that the asset is is in currently uh, in order to delete or dispose of the asset so you'll notice that if I was logged into a different location um, besides the app, the, the that application besides the location of being in Brighton HQ, for instance, let's say we were logged in in the RFID lab or the Lansing location, these two buttons would not be highlighted, and you would not be able to delete or dispose the asset. So all you would do in order to delete an asset is click on delete, and then come through, and then now there's no record that's actually found. So if you ever came to do a search on the asset, you would come do a search, you'd click on XBR1234, and what you would have is no asset is found. Well, what if you accidentally deleted an asset and you said, oh wait, you know what, like I didn't want to delete that asset. I made a mistake. Well, the great thing about ACS is you can actually pull up, the, the asset is actually not completely deleted. It's actually, uh, what we've done is we've created it so that it becomes inactive in your database. So in order to see the XBR1234, the desktop that we've created, what you simply do under the search is you click on include inactive. Click search and all of a sudden there you have it. So in order to undelete the asset, you just simply click on the asset, click on undelete, and it would create a work order. And all you'd have to do is click on the asset, click on complete work order, click on undelete, and there you go we would be able to now, if we go to search under XBR, there it is. Just the, just like how it was found before. And you can take a look under the details again, where it was audited before, now it's deleted and then undeleted. And then if we wanted to dispose of an asset, let's say that this asset is no longer available or has been destroyed somehow, uh, you would just click on dispose, fill out the paper, fill out the, the proper data or the value, Click on dispose, and from there you would be able to dispose of the item um, and go from there. And kind of clearly showing this again, we'll click on dispose again. Uh, click on dis dispose in the app application, 
And then from here, what you'll notice is that it's been disposed. Um, and then in order to undispose it, you would click on the asset again, click on undispose, and now the as application or the asset is undisposed um, and has been brought back to being a current asset inside of ACS. This concludes our demo of Lowry's asset control system. If you have any additional questions, please contact your sales, uh, your customer sales representative at 810-918-2672. Thank you.